Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. It's that time of the month again. Actually, it's past that time of the month again. I should have done this video a few weeks ago, but it's the usual kind of monthly snapshot where I talk about the performance of my solar PV system here in the UK for the month of March 2021. Let's roll the intro. Okay, so the reason this video is late is one of the things I wanted to try and include in the videos moving forward is how much my electricity bill is to try and give you some indication of that. Because again, I do use a lot of electricity in this house for two reasons really. We work from home, so there's obviously energy being used there. And we have two electric vehicles that we're charging up as well. So the consumption is high, but I still think the, the costs are, are pretty low. But anyway, so what normally happens is I do the video and a couple of days after, my electricity bill turns up from Optimus Energy. So I thought, right, this month I will wait till the electricity bill comes through, then I'll do the video so I can give a bit more clarity on how much everything is. But even now, they still haven't had my electricity bill. So what I will do in this video is I will talk about how much um, energy we used last month and how much that cost us to try and give you some indication. So. Yeah, let's get on with it. So if you're new to this channel and this video series, thanks very much for checking it out. Up on the screen now, I will show you quickly what my solar system looks like. So I have 30 solar panels on my roof, kind of south easterly facing. It's a nine kilowatt solar array. That's all connected back to a six kilowatt inverter. And from there, a few different things are happening. I'm heating my hot water from solar surface and off-grid energy via my My Energy Eddy. I also have a My Energy Zappy Generation 1 that we use for charging the cars. Those two things are connected in by something called a Harvey, which is basically a wireless CT clamp. I also have the My Energy Home Hub. And then I connected to that, I also have the Tesla Power 2, the original one with the Gateway 1, so no um, backup solutions but that works really fine for me and that's all brought together from um, buying my my electricity and my gas from Octopus Energy. Specifically I'm on the Octopus Go tariff which means between half past 12 in the morning and half past four in the morning it's off peak we only pay five pence per kilowatt and uh, obviously outside of that it's about 15 or 16 p something like that. If you are looking to change energy suppliers, perhaps you've got an electric vehicle as well, then do definitely consider Octopus Energy. There's a link in the description below. If you sign up with my link, both of us get 50 pounds credit onto their bill. And I think the customer service is really good. And again, it's pretty cheap, all things considered. So to start off with, I will just do a quick refresher on last month's electricity usage and my bill and I'll pop that up on the screen so you can see as we're going through it to just provide some context. So last month, my, I say last month, from the 4th of February to the 3rd of March, pretty much, you know, last month, uh, my electricity consumption totaled 801.5 kilowatt hours from the grid, which again is a seems like a really big number and it is relatively big but you have to remember it's winter the two electric cars heat let um hot water it's obviously starts it's got lighter now but like the power or the lights are on computers are on i've got servers on 24 by 7 doing all sorts of different stuff so anyway um so the good news is of of that 801.5 kilowatt hours 667.2 of them were all off peak so i only paid 4.76 pence per kilowatt hour plus that um, for that. Um, and then the rest of it, so the 113.6 was during peak time. So the total bill for that, including um, the standing charges and everything, came to 58.67, which I think is pretty good for a month considering that amount of usage. And you can see here that um, that equates to my average cost per kilowatt hour being 6.15 pence. So I think that's really good. And that's another reason why uh, I'm with Oxford Energy on the go tariff to try and you know, continue to reduce my electricity bills when solar isn't providing everything that I need. So if we have a quick look at um, my energy consumption for um, March 2021, 
put it up on the screen here so you can see that my solar PV system generated 593.69 kilowatt hours of electricity. I self consumed 95% of that so there are certain times where I couldn't fully consume it and obviously I exported 28.81 kilowatt hours. Big consumption though um, so imported you know, 670 odd kilowatt hours so 0.67 um, megawatts so again I'm almost 50 50 getting close to 50 50 now that spring's kind of coming and um, the weather's good and obviously kids being back at school and some COVID stuff relaxing obviously we're using the cars more as well which is, is why this is happening so um, I guess the other thing to keep in mind is obviously I'm I was one of the last people on the feed-in tariff so anything I export I don't get paid for because um, I just get paid a fixed uh, export of 50% of what I generate regardless of whether I export it or not anyway I've got other videos on that um, so if we have a quick look on this chart before we pick up just a couple of the, the good and bad days you can see that in general solar hasn't been that great it's been a bit up and down over the whole of the the month really it started to peak up again towards the end of march which is good because the weather has got better but you can see there's some really high consumption days where um we're charging both cars we're heating up the, uh, the hot water we're filling up the power wall obviously cooking meals all our uh, cooking is done with electricity as well so the only thing we use gas for is for um heating that's central heating that's it um, so you can see quite a, a high usage month really um, again because the weather's been pretty rubbish here so uh, we will pick out a couple of days in a moment to see kind of what that um, day usage looks like I don't do the day by day stuff uh, anymore because I don't think that many people found it interesting um, if we look at how it compares to last year so it was 2018 well the end of 2018 when I got my solar installation done so if we look at March we can see that 2021 was my worst year yet so 2020 was the best year but it was actually a, a not a very good solar generation for March 2021 compared to the other years as always please leave uh, comments down below as to how your systems performed the setup you know did your was your March worse than, than previous years as well so if we pick out a couple of days, we can see here was a really bad day. It was on the 10th of March. And you can see uh, at the start of this graph, um, it peaks up uh, in the middle there. That will be a little bit of um, hot water stuff going on, most likely. Um, then you can see in the little down trough, this is now we're running from the battery. But then, you know, hair dryers, toasters, kettles, all sorts of things come on in the morning, but the generation from solar PV was pretty rubbish. So only 4.77 kilowatt hours, and you know we had to import 20.62 kilowatt hours from the grid. And obviously a portion of that, well, actually most of that on that day, looks like it would have come during peak times as opposed to from the power wall, because the weather's been so sporadic, the power wall doesn't always decide to charge um, off grid or off peak. Um, I have a, another video coming on why I have my power in a certain setting uh, all the time. That'll be on later in the week, probably. Um, another day that um, wasn't too bad for solar generation here on the 14th of March. So we, this is how we can see kind of how sporadic things are. So you, you can see there um, not a lot of charging or anything having to go on in the early hours of the morning, which is pretty good. And then solar pretty much met all of our requirements throughout the whole day. And then all the way through to the evening, we could run from the battery. So 17.03 kilowatt hours of energy from solar. And we only imported 2.54 kilowatt hours. And again, that would have all been off peak, as you can see there at the beginning of the graph. So, you know, 15 pence for the day, which is fantastic, really. Um, and then another little look here. This is probably the best day of the month, which is you know, towards the end of March, say on the 30th. So... Decent performance, 38.8 kilowatt hours. You can see not a brilliant graph. The, towards the latter part of the day, it was a good bell curve, but a bit um, overcast and sketchy in the in the early hours of the day. And we also had a little bit of a deficit in the power, which we had that little spike at um, probably about six o'clock or something. 
But again, a little bit of hot water stuff going on probably down there, uh, a little bit of power cycling. But again, we didn't have to import that much uh, from the grid. So 6.88 kilowatt hours. And again, that would have been off peak as well. So not too much money in terms of the cost. So that's it in terms of the snapshot. Just again, like I said, we don't go through the day by days anymore. Just kind of give you the high levels of, of kind of what um, we have. One thing I will kind of share with you before I look at the um, the car charging and the power and the hot water surplus charging, I was looking into the Solar Edge app, which is what my inverter is, about some other stats that might be kind of semi interesting to share. I don't know if they are. Um, let me know in the comments if this is something I should do every month. But you can see here there is some graphing for the site humidity and temperature throughout the month. So you can see here. Um, you know how the humidity is kind of dropping down towards the end but then been somewhat more consistent towards the rest of the month but the site you know the temperature of where I live dipped down a little bit and then has been gradually going up you know to about 15 degrees centigrade so still pretty cold uh, overall here in uh, Worcestershire and then this other one I mapped it with the temperature which is on the other graph but also with the wind so a little bit interesting again, just to see, I'll see how windy it is. The wind, you, you may not think has much effect on solar, but of course it does. The windier it is, if it is overcast, there is more chances that you're gonna get some bright spells. Obviously those bright spells won't last as long as the, the clouds are constantly moving. But just a couple of charts I hadn't really noticed before that I thought I would share in case that's of any interest. So I'll just grab my phone and then I'll show you the information we have from the Powerwall, the Zappi and the Eddy. Okay, so as usual, I'll put a little picture up over here so you can see what I can see. So not surprisingly, because the weather wasn't fantastic, um, most of the charging for the cars came from the grid. So you can see 225.02 kilowatt hours of charging, which equated to 79% of our charging came from the grid. But we did manage to put 61.86 kilowatt hours, which are 21% um, from solar into the car so pretty good um like i said unless the the weather is fantastic we are always gonna have to plug the cars in and charge a bit during off peak so i never expect it to be 100 percent um green because we both using our cars every day to take kids to school and pick them up and and what have you in terms of the water actually we didn't do too bad this month so you can see there 33 kilowatt hours of water was heated with surplus solar. Um, I've got other videos uh, on this, but basically the way my system is set up, the priority charging is to fill the power wall, so the battery back up to be full up first. Then it will go to heating hot water, assuming that the surplus solar isn't more than about 1.4 kilowatt hours, because then it will switch to um, charging the car until that drops off, then it will go back to heating hot water. So that's how I have kind of my things set up. And then if we have a little look at the power wall, we can see that I managed to get 328 kilowatt hours of energy or electricity out of the power wall. So a combination of surplus solar and um, charging off peak from the grid. Um, and you can see on this little chart here that 28% um, of my power came from the power wall, 26% of it came from solar. Um, and then in terms of our energy offset against about 50%, which is kind of what I expect um, for this, this time of the year. So that's it, another month of solar. I hope this video series continues to be of interest. Feel free to ask any comments or anything you have uh, down below. I'd really appreciate it if you enjoyed this video to leave a thumbs up if you don't like it for some reason by all means leave a thumbs down but please leave a comment as to how i can make things better um that would be much appreciated please consider subscribing if you don't already and press that notification bell and until next time take care of yourselves look after you and your family and i'll catch you in the next spectrum geeks video bye for now